Hi everyone and welcome to Book Boop. My name is Rachel and today I'm going to be doing the Harry Potter Spells book tag. And joining me is my husband, Robert. I'm Robert back. Robert is going to be casting our spells for us. So there are 10 different prompts and 10 different spells and 10 different books I'll be talking about. So let's go ahead and jump in. What is our first spell, Roberto? Okay, number one is Expecto Patronum. Ooh, okay. A childhood book connected to good memories. So when I was thinking this through, usually the first book you would think I'd think of is Harry Potter, mm -hmm. which that is definitely one. But honestly, the one that really hit me the most is Wait Till Helen Comes by Mary Downing Hahn. This is probably my favorite book from my childhood, and it's the book that I think of the most from my childhood. It's the one that I think really got me into reading. I read a lot of American Girl books and everything, but it was what the what originally got me into spooky, creepy books. So this one holds a very special place in my heart. Well, that's good. I hope I hold a special place in your heart. You do. Okay. <laughs> um, Expelliarmus. Ooh, you gotta okay. have the R for Expelliarmus. <laughs> a book that took you by surprise. So that one was definitely The Assassination of Brangwen Spurge by M.T. Anderson and Eugene Yelchin. I can never remember the entire title of this book, but this took me by surprise so much. It is a middle grade book, and it's really, for you can tell from the cover, it's really quirky. There's lots of really beautiful artwork in it. I've talked about this book a lot in recent videos, but it just, it was so good. It reminded me so much of watching um, like a Monty Python film, and it was funny. It was quirky. It had a great message. It was just so good. So really surprised me. So if you haven't picked this one up, give it a try. It's a lot of fun, and it's a quick read, too. Not for me. <laughs> it would be. It's, it's a very quick read. It's, I'm a very it's a slow blast. reader, guys. Like, mm, no. Priori Incantato, the last book you read. That would be Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm halfway through Prisoner of Azkaban. I'm trying my best to try to get through all the Harry Potter books. <laughs> it's going a little slower than I would like, but it's been fun. Okay. Uh, Alohomora. I always hear that. That spell and like Hermione's Her mind, that's why I'm trying to say it. <laughs> Alohomora. <laughs> a book that introduced you to a genre you had not considered before. Okay, I would say this one would be The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. That is a nonfiction book, and I don't normally ever read nonfiction. Mm. I've read a little bit that's like self-help, but this one was specifically historical nonfiction and just focused on the Chicago World's Fair and the serial killer, H.H. H. Holmes, which was really disturbing and really fascinating at the same time. Uh, but that one just kind of opened my eyes to like, hey, I could actually enjoy reading these. And that was a friend recommendation. Yeah, and a friend yeah. of mine recommended it to me. And I heard a lot about it, too, on BookTube, and so many people enjoyed it. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like this, but it was actually really fascinating. It was a little bit longer read for me. It was a little bit of a slog to get through because there's a lot of details. But it definitely opened my mind to be like, hey, I'm actually, I think I would probably read more of these. So, well, there you go. Yeah, makes me smarter. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing will help me there. <laughs> hey, now. Um, ridiculous. That was stupid. That was stupid. Good old Lupin. <laughs> A funny book you've read. A funny book. So, I haven't really read many books that are specifically funny, like are mm -hmm. specifically supposed to be comedic. But when I was thinking through some books that I've read that made me laugh, especially even just out loud while, you know, while I'm reading them, are books by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. So The Illuminae Files or Aurora Rising, they they have such a witty dialogue and it's just it's funny. There's lots of moments and their books are such high stakes. Like they're really stressful, stressful plots. <laughs> they're really fast paced and stressful, but then they throw in so much humor. That it's just, so that, that's the ones I thought of, which is books by them. Okay. They write some good stuff. Next. Next. No, I don't know how to pronounce this properly, so. Mm. Uh, sonorous or sonorous. Mm. Uh, a book you think everyone should know about. Mm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Oh, that's okay. I told him to keep the book down. You're doing great. I failed. You're doing <laughs> okay, so a book I would love for everybody to know about is The Dead House by, I always forget the name, Don Kurtigich. Kurt Kurt Pretty sure it's Kurtigich. I really love this book. I read it in October and I was very pleasantly surprised by it. I hadn't really heard of it before, but I had seen it in the bargain section at Books A Million for 
just months and I wanted to pick it up, but I hadn't heard anything about it, but it was so good. It's mixed media. It's a mystery. It's a thriller. It's creepy. It's just like the perfect fall read. And I had so much fun reading. It was really immersive. So this is one I recommend. It's a lot of fun. Um, if you want to, you can watch my wrap up and I give more details about it, a description about it and what I thought about it. But it's a fun one. I wish more people knew about it. Well, now I know about it. It's a good one. Even though I knew about that like a while ago. Yeah, because I kept being like, should I buy this? <laughs> should I buy any book? It's been like. Yeah. Um, Obliviate. A book or spoiler you would like to forget having read. Oh, okay. Yes. Sorry. Okay, so this one. When I was thinking through this one, I thought about the fact I don't think I'd want to obliv obliviate a book that I've read that I didn't like. Because a lot of times, oh, I get it. so far, books that I've read that I really didn't like were ones that were pretty popular and a lot of people really liked. So I feel like if I obliviated it, then I'd, I would still see it and people would talk about it and go, oh, I should read that. And then I'd read it again and it'd be horrible all over again Just for keep me. obliviating. So for me, the one thing I could think of is um, for The Twisted oh. Ones by Scott Cawthon. So this one, I read the first book probably two or three years ago. And I really enjoyed it. It was super creepy, really intense. And I knew I wanted to read the next one. This is the second one in the series. And when I went to go add it to my Goodreads to read this, I accidentally saw a spoiler. Someone just, like, they didn't even, like, check it as a spoiler or something. And they put a huge spoiler that I happened to see that just ruined the ending of the book for me. And because of that, I didn't enjoy this as much mm. as I think I would have. Nice. So I wish, and it, it was the kind of spoiler that stuck in my head. Even though I didn't read this until a couple years later, I was hoping I would forget. I didn't forget. I remembered. And so it just ruined the ending for me and didn't make it as heart pounding and just high stakes as it should have been or shocking. So that was frustrating. I wish I could have forgotten that spoiler because I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more because I ended up only giving it like three stars. Mm. It's like so. it's it's like almost every movie trailer nowadays. You see the whole movie in the trailer. <laughs> you so see far. all the good parts in the trailer. Especially when it's funny movies. It's like, oh, this looks hilarious. And you go and you watch a movie and then every funny moment was in the trailer. So yeah, you already and saw you're like, it. So. this isn't, I already on, saw the funny parts. <laughs> better than this. Uh, Imperio, mm -hmm. a book you had to read for school. Mm, okay, so this is one I had to write down. Um, oh, I've been out of college for a while. I graduated in 2009. It's so not that long ago. That feels, it's been it's 10 not years. That long ago. 10 years. 10 That's years. crazy to think it's, it's been 10 years since I graduated college. For me. Oh, you're so old. <laughs> this grade don't lie. So, so my, there's a class I had to take that was called social issues or social problems. I think it was called social problems. Mm. And the professor I had was a total hippie, total hippie. I mean, he wore the tie-dye t-shirt and he had the long hair like and when he everything. Taught, he wore tie-dye? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was a total hippie. And there was this book that we had to read. It was called Mean Jeans. It's by Terry Burnham and Jay Phelan, Phelan. And I despised this book. We had to read it for class. I did it. I read the whole thing. I read my assignment because I'm very much a rule follower. And I was like, mm -hmm. what do I do with this assignment? But I personally, as a Christian, I did not agree with the content of the book. It was basically about how we are, you know, we're descendants of apes. And because of this, we have all these animalistic qualities. So basically, if we if we cheat on our spouse or it's not really our fault, it's because of our animalistic uh, qualities of wanting to further, like, have more kids. Or I don't know. Basically, it was giving maybe. excuses like, you're not really doing anything wrong when you actually do things wrong because it's... Anyways, I hated it so much. And everybody else in my class was like, oh, my eyes have been opened. Oh, my goodness. And I'm like, you guys really believe this this junk? Are you kidding me? So, anyways, I hated that book so much. I don't know if it's the so same much. person. Yeah. But when I hear Mean Gene, I can only think of Mean Gene Oakland from WCW Wrestling back in the <laughs> like early 90s. Probably before. It was before that. But that was not a part of my, my childhood. That's so all I can think of is Mean Gene. I can't that's share can with you. <laughs> I can't mean share Gene with you in that memory. <laughs> okay, sorry. Crucio. Mm. A book that was painful to read. Oh, oh boy, howdy. So I have a few of these, but the ones that pop up the most recent for me is the Charlotte Holm series by Brandon Cavallaro. I no longer own them. I had the first two in the series. I bought them, so I made myself read them because I thought I would love them, and I hated them so much, which was sad because they're so, they are really popular. But I just didn't like them. I didn't like the characters. The plot was confusing. It made no sense. 
and they're mysteries because they're supposed to be Sherlock Holmes. Oh, it's those. Oh, those. Yeah, okay. so they're supposed to they be mysteries cool. and everything. And they sound really cool. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm going to love these. And it, it was like it gets to the reveal at the end of each mystery and it would make no sense. I'd be like, what? Huh? Like it just, it, I hated it. I hated it so much. So, but I read them. I read both of them because I paid for it. I was going to get my money's worth, but I, I donated them to the library after God, that. So sweet of you to let someone else read that. Yeah. Well, some people love them. I, I don't know why, but some people love them. And Anyways. Are we on a, this is the, the last spell, one, right? Yeah. Oh, no. Havada Kedavra. Ooh. A book that could kill. Yes. And this prompt, there was a note next to this prompt that said, oh. interpret how you will. So, my thought with this was, what's a book that just sort of crushed you? Like, a book that you read and it just destroyed you emotionally. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought of. So, what I thought for this one was My Diary from the End of the World by Jodi Lynn Anderson. This one, this is a middle grade, and I didn't think it would be as emotionally impacting and hard-hitting as it was. And, oh my goodness, it... This, this ending destroyed me in a good way, in a good way. I think but you it, cried, right? I did. Yeah, I, remember I remember I was, that. <laughs> I remember I was, I was trying not to cry after I finished the book. And then I was so like emotionally impacted that I wanted to tell you about it. Oh, and like, God. while I was trying to explain what happened to the end, cause I knew you would never read it. So I didn't worry about spoiling you on it. I started like tearing up. I was like choking up while I was trying to tell you what happened. <laughs> cause it was just so emotional. It was embarrassing. So this one is so good and it just destroyed me. So Avada Kedavra. Yes, there you go. Exactly that one. So that was a really fun tag. Hey, look, I this has nothing to do with the tag. Yeah. But I realized when I look at a certain spot uh-huh. on the camera, it uh-huh. makes my eyes look crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it one time and I can't recreate it. Oh but I'm no! Find it. <laughs> I will find it. You all can look for that. It'll be fun. I hope you all enjoyed this tag. I'm not going to tag anyone specifically because this is a pretty old tag, so I'm not sure who's done it and who hasn't. So if you're interested in doing this tag, I tag you. Do it. Go. Go do it now. On this side of the screen over here is my logo. If you click on that, you can subscribe to my channel and follow me on my book journey. On this side of the video over here, that's probably covering my husband's face, is a suggestion for another video if you don't watch another one right now. But thank you so much for watching. You rock, and don't forget to keep reading. Bye. You've been booped.